Hi, I'm making this video for myself, uh, maybe even more so than I am for you. Uh, I'm worn out explaining the same concept over and over to different people who just don't seem to get it. And I feel I need an outlet to refer people. Uh, funny enough, I actually made this video a number of years ago, but I feel I can do a better job now. So I'd like to spend some time to explain to you the relationship between your experiences and scientific studies. You have individual experiences, and those experiences sometimes don't line up with the results of scientific studies. Does that make the study incorrect? No. But then does that make your individual experience incorrect? No. These two concepts can still exist at the same time, but we need to understand how, because at first glance, they seem like they can't. Physionic is, by a large part, built on in-depth scientific analysis, and I get hammered with comments from people who get exceptionally defensive when I conclude something based on a study or set of studies that doesn't align with their personal experience. I certainly wouldn't want someone to feel their experience is invalid, and I respect your personal experience as true, but that doesn't mean that your experience invalidates the science, and here's why. A scientific study is taking the individual experiences of many people and grouping it together to come to a stronger conclusion than one person's individual experience. So let's take, for example, this fish oil pill. Researchers want to know if fish oil pills will reduce blood cholesterol levels. So they randomly select a number of people from the population that they're interested in studying and recruit them into the study. Then they might separate them into two groups. One group consumes fish oil and the other consumes a fake fish oil supplement called a placebo. From there, the researchers start to eliminate confounding variables. These are variables that might interfere with the results of the study. Meaning if one group of people has a characteristic that the comparison group does not, that could alter the results of the study, which would mean that we no longer know if the effect was from fish oil or this confounding variable. For example, if the fish oil consuming group also consumed more protein than the placebo group, now we won't know if the potential differences at the end of the study are due to fish oil or due to a protein consumption, the confounding variable. Or let's say the researchers want 10 people in each group. The fish oil group has 10 people and the placebo group has 10 people. However, eight of the people in the placebo condition have a family history of high blood cholesterol. That could lead to an improper conclusion because they start off at a disadvantage. The list of confounding factors really just could go on and on. The bottom line is that the researchers make sure to control for as many of those factors as possible by making sure that both groups are relatively similar. So now, if the results show a difference at the end of the study, the researchers can be confident that the results are due to the real fish oil effect, or even a lack of an effect if there isn't one. Okay, so the researchers conduct their study, they perform their experiments, they get their results, but what are the results? The results are the average output of the 10 people in the group. So to say that differently, the researchers check the blood cholesterol of each person in the fish oil group and each person in the placebo group after a set time of consuming each. So we'll say one month. Now they have the individual results, AKA experiences of each person, 10 results from the fish oil group and 10 results from the placebo group. Now the researchers combine the 10 individual results and find the average of the 10. This single number now represents the experiences of 10 people. But clearly it isn't an exact representation of person three's results, nor person five's results, nor anyone's individual result, AKA experience. But it still tells us the expected result if we were to randomly select 10 new people and have them consume fish oil the exact same way. The power of 10 experiences averaged together is more telling of the population's expected result than the power of one person's experience. So does that make that single person's experience invalid, incorrect? No, 
It just means that they experienced a result that was slightly different from what the group averaged, but their experience was still accounted for in the average. Now, let's say that the fish oil does reduce blood cholesterol. So the researchers conclude, we believe fish oil reduces blood cholesterol. And yet, you stumble across this study or some idiot on the internet providing videos where he breaks down these studies and he spits up the same conclusion. And yet when you consume fish oil, your blood cholesterol increased. So you type away ferociously that these scientists are wrong, the guy presenting is a moron, or the scientists have missed something. Well, your experience can still be true. But consider this. Experts in the field took the time to control as many variables as possible, including nutrition, physical activity, gender, age, family history, starting health, among many other metrics. Yet you feel that they are wrong because your experience is different. Your experience is more powerful than every other person's experience in this study, confounding factors accounted for. That, unfortunately, is incorrect. You'd have to control many, many factors, some that you may never have thought about, to definitively say that fish oil actually raised your cholesterol. For example, did you eat the same diet during that time? Did you begin supplementing with something else as well? What time did you get your blood work checked? Did you have a bad day at work the day before you had your blood taken? How's your family life? The point is, there are hundreds of considerations, most of which are accounted for by researchers. And even if they aren't all accounted for, they are drowned out by the sheer number of experiences included in the study. So let's say that someone in the study had a horrible night's sleep, like participants number five in the fish oil group. And as we can see, his blood cholesterol increased, which goes against what the overall study result indicated. Well, that's because his result, his blood work, still counted, but it was drowned out by the nine other people's results, which all pulled the result back down, thereby still showing the overall effect of fish oil to reduce blood cholesterol. Or maybe some other reason, he was missed in the screening before the study, and it turns out that he has a rare genetic anomaly that when exposed to fish oil, his body increases cholesterol production or any other number of factors. The point is, even with researchers controlling as many factors as possible, certain ones can't be accounted for. And generally, it doesn't matter, because individual dissenting results get drowned out in the pull of the many other results that point in the same direction, leading to an average effect that is different from person 5's experience. So then, is person 5's experience incorrect yet again? Nope. But when discussing with others, person 5 should be best suited to say, yeah, fish oil helps most people drop their blood cholesterol, and maybe it would for me too if I controlled all the variables I can, or maybe it just has a different reaction in me. But overall, I'd still trust that if you, dear stranger, were to consume fish oil, you'll probably see a reduction in cholesterol like the overall study results indicate, and you're unlikely to experience an increase like me. Finally, what if a person five says that to someone and they exclaim, hey, fish oil raised my cholesterol too, and then they bond over that fact and they excitedly start an anti-fish oil awareness group that attracts others that have had this counterintuitive result of increased cholesterol. Well, then you might have the makings of a subgroup, a group within the population that experiences a different result from the majority of people in the population and may need a special study to tease out if they really do experience that effect in the context of appropriate controls, of course. Now, it might just turn out that this new study would build on the first study and change to the conclusions of most people experience reductions in blood cholesterol from fish oil consumption, yet we have identified fish oil urea pathologis, a genetic disorder that affects a minority of people, wherein they experience an increase in blood cholesterol and therefore should 
avoid this supplement. And that, my friend, is how studies build on one another, creating nuances that are built on fact instead of looking at one's own circumstance and dismissing results, because it doesn't fit one's own bias or experience. But it's also possible everyone in the anti-fish oil awareness group also loves to eat fructose-filled drinks, but they never thought to control for that fact. And when the researchers conduct the second study, they control for the added fructose and end up finding out that these people do not experience increases in cholesterol from fish oil when all other factors are accounted for. Ultimately, your personal experience and scientific conclusions can coexist. And while it is entirely possible that scientific studies are missing nuances that have yet to be discovered, it would be incorrect to apply one's personal, uncontrolled experience over the evidence of a well-controlled study, especially now that we understand that the study has the power of tens, hundreds, and even sometimes thousands of people's varyingly controlled experiences put together to come to a conclusion. Thank you for allowing me to get that off my chest. There's far more to explain, but this is a good starting point by which to understand how both can exist without science being wrong based on your personal biases. Until next time.